What's going on, fam? I feel like this is an appropriate conversation. Um, let's talk about how to find out if tech sales is not for you, all right? So backdrop, this channel, we launched this channel before, and I'm referring to my wife and I, before either one of us had a job in tech sales, all right? When we were pursuing those endeavors, now fast forward, we're in it. My wife, she's a senior enterprise sales development rep for really good tech company. I'm an account executive for a tech company. And my guess would be is that a lot of you watching this video who are trying to figure out if tech sales is for you, a lot of you, it's probably not for you, right? And so the first thing that I wanna cover is seek out understanding the downsides to tech sales. Like search for that, right? And so how can you search for that? Go on Reddit. Um, you can YouTube it, but I mean, you're only gonna find so much, I think on YouTube because it's people like me who partner with platforms that prepare you for tech sales, right? And we get compensated for that. Like we're content creators. I'm a content creator, y'all. I make videos in part to make money. And I also wanna help you. So don't just listen to random people like me on YouTube about tech sales, right? Um, another thing to do, meet with people. Like go on LinkedIn, look up people who are sales development reps, business development reps, account executives. Ask if they'll give you 15 minutes on a, on a Zoom call or or some type of um, phone call. Meet with us, meet with me, right? Click the link, theworthness.com in the description. Like I'll have a conversation. Ask the hard questions about what is really going on, right? What is the job difficult? What is the difficulty of it? Um, what, what challenges are there when it comes to maintaining a job, right? Um, so that's my first point. Diligently seek out the downside, okay? Um, next point would be ask yourself the question, are you, view, are you viewing this as a career or a side gig? So I wasn't as aware of this like when I was first pursuing these endeavors. I didn't really know if you can do it as a side gig or not. And you might still be able to do it as a side gig, so to speak, like if you're maybe working for commission only, right? Um, but in terms of what a lot of you are more than likely seeking, which is that salary, the benefits, as well as commission, this is not a side gig, okay? This is a career. This is something that is going to take your full attention from the standpoint of getting into a career. So if you're looking for like, a quick turnaround on making some real good money. You got into a jam and now it's like, okay, what work from home job can I do? Let me check out tech sales. I ain't saying you can't check it out. I'm just like looking to give you the real, like this is not a side gig. Like this is gonna take a lot of your attention and it's gonna take a lot of intentionality to get into the career, like in the first place, right? Like, are there people who land jobs within weeks or months? Yeah, it happens. It may have happened more in the past, um, but those are like unicorns. I didn't realize how much of a unicorn story that is of landing jobs like super fast. So for some, it might take months. For some, it might take more than a year. Like for some, it might take two years. For some, looking at this, it might take a couple of weeks. I don't know. What I'm saying is it's not a side gig, okay? Uh, number three, point three, Ask yourself the question, can you see yourself doing sales? At the end of the day, it's sales. I, I came from automotive sales, new car, used car sales. I like this better than that. I make good money doing car sales. I like selling business to business so far more from what I've experienced. Um, I like the consultation that's involved. I like the the thought out conversations. I like the planning that goes into putting together a solution, putting together proposals, and then collaborating with um, 
business people or leaders on the other side of that conversation to really understand what solution is the best fit. Like, I really like that. But at the end of the day, like it's sales, right? Like we can throw whatever title we want, sales development rep, business development rep, account executive, but we're salespeople. So the objective is to position our solution the best way we possibly can and then paint a value understanding to the other person so that there is a financial transaction that takes place. So ask yourself the question, can you see yourself doing sales? And the fourth point is, are you willing to have your livelihood based on performance? Are you willing to have your livelihood based on performance? Sales is about performance. You know what that means? That means that if you invest time getting into this career and you get into it, now guess what? You're working a job where you have to perform. And if you don't perform, then chances are your job is going to be at jeopardy. So are you willing to work in a field where your livelihood is based on performance, right? Not necessarily doing the same routine every day where you're more so going through a checkbox um, or whatever that is, sales is a bit different. It's about getting results. You can go through the same routine, so to speak, but if the results are not there like they were yesterday, then your livelihood is at jeopardy, okay? And just a quick plug, if you go to wordness.com in the description, you can see who I recommend to look at in terms of the SDR or even the account executive position, predominantly if you're already an SDR or a BDR. Now, there are a lot of other um, different educational platforms and things out there, and you don't have to go through a boot camp or a course. I'm not saying any of that to do tech sales, but what I'm saying, like what I feel like is a very helpful method um, when it comes to really being taught about what it's about having having this the support system the community and being educated on even how to go about landing a job we have that at the wordless.com and so i'm not saying who it is because it changes over time we go with who we really feel like is the best fit at the time that we would want to partner with now number five number five do you have the stomach for high risk, high reward? So this is my last point. Ask yourself the question, do you have the stomach for high risk, high reward? It's a cool reward compared to a lot of jobs out there. It's really cool. I have probably worked for about 25 different companies in my life. I'm 36 now. I've probably worked for about 25. Um, quite a few. I've worked in a lot of different fields from overnight warehouse work to chauffeuring um, to valet parking um, to pizza delivery to car sales. This is cool. It's cool to have the opportunity to get into a remote position. Every position is not remote in tech. Like we work in remote. So it's really cool to have weekends off. It's really cool to be able to make pretty good money to say that, like, you know, we're working remote. So the reward is there and the potential to promote and do better and, 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 and bring your income higher over time is there. But it's high risk. I definitely would not call it job security, <laughs> okay? It sells. <laughs> I would not call it job security. If you have the stomach for that, if you're an adventure taker, if you feel like you can build the repeatable skills to bring repeatable results and you have the grit, um, by all means, go ahead. But that's just something to ask yourself. Do you have the stomach um, to tolerate high risk, high reward? Hope this was helpful for y'all. Um, reach out if you have any questions. Peace.